What's good people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload. I don't know why, so just make sure you hit that bell. Bruh. Stupid. Anyway guys, today's episode, it's all about UV light. Particularly UVA and UVB. Because I've been looking into that lately. Because I've been trying to figure out whether it has any impact when it comes to growth or maybe even secondary metabolite production. I'm talking like terps and bamidabinoids. And what I did, I pulled out a few key points. Because it turns out that by making a few key adjustments, you can actually potentially increase some of those terps. And that's crazy to me. I'm all about the terps, baby, bring them on. Now, I'm not claiming to be a professional scientist when it comes to UV, but I did do a little bit of research and all I'm doing is sharing the key points that I learned with you guys. Now, first off, some of you guys may be like, what the hell is UV in the first place? It sounds scary. Well, UV light or ultraviolet light is a type of ultramagnetic radiation that has shorter wavelengths than visible light. It's like it's literally part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which also includes radio waves, microwaves, not those ones you cook your food in, infrared radiation, visible light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Now, for those who don't know, the term infrared or IR lighting is an electromagnetic radiation in the spectral band between microwaves and visible light. It's invisible to the human eye, and IR is generally understood to encompass wavelengths from around 750 nm to about 1000 nm. UV light has a higher energy than visible light, but lower energy than x-rays, which I found pretty interesting. Now the UV spectrum is divided into three main regions based on wavelength. UVA, which is ultraviolet A, UVB, which is ultraviolet B, and UVC, you guessed it, ultraviolet C. Now all these things have different specifications, but UVA light is the least energetic of the three rays, and it's the closest to visible light. It's often associated with things like tanning beds. Ultraviolet B has more energy than UVA and is known for its role in causing sunburns. It's also essential for the production in vitamin D in the skin. Now, ultraviolet C has the highest energy and it's like germicidal type stuff. It's often used for disinfection purposes such as in hospitals and water treatment plants. So as you guys can see already, there are a lot of uses when it comes to UV light. But for us, we're trying to figure out the plant growth. In this context, UV light is sometimes used to mimic natural sunlight. And studies have reported that that could potentially increase the production of certain compounds, including cannabinoids and terpenes. Now guys, it's super important to note that prolonged exposure to this UV light, especially without proper protection, can cause harmful effects to living organisms, including humans, as even UV light from the sun plays a role in both positive and negative aspects of health. Now, when it comes to the UV light, a lot of people are probably thinking, well, how can I incorporate it? Should I incorporate it? What are the benefits, Matt? Well, some studies actually suggest that exposure to UVB light can trigger the production of secondary metabolites in your ladies, including cannabinoids and terpenes. Now, these compounds I've read are literally part of like the plant's defense mechanisms. So you can understand the plant's trying to defend itself and in that way, it's like pushing out more of these trichome heads and stuff like that. And that way, like you get a lot more trikes on your flower. But the UV light has also been associated with increased resin production. Now, that resin also contains a lot of stuff like cannabinoids, which contribute to your overall flavor taste and general potency man the general of your flower now a lot of you guys would know that stress can trigger good things when it comes to your ladies while excessive stress is harmful controlled stress can lead to the production of those compounds that we were talking about that can enhance the plant's ability to defend itself now it's not like your plant is actually going into battle but sometimes you make it feel that way by by doing these things. Now, of course, there's always a con when it comes to everything and you can cause potential damage. Too much UV exposure can lead to damage just like it does in humans. It's crucial to provide the right intensity and duration to avoid any harm. And of course, different types of genetics may respond differently to UV light. Some of them may be more sensitive or just respond differently to others. So keep that in mind. Now, a lot of you guys would probably have some type of light already. Me personally, I'm running those Mars Hydro lights and shout out to Mars Hydro. They got some banging lights. And I'm sure there's something a lot of you people are wondering at this point is can I supplement my existing setup with some UV IR lighting? And their answer is absolutely. And Mars Hydro's got you covered with that. So check out some of their UV IR lighting and don't be disappointed. You can incorporate some of these bars into your setup really easily and watch your plants flourish. They're 45 watt LED supplemental lightings and they can literally work with anything you got running right now. They got a great range of UV and IR bands and supplementing your white full spectrum grow light with some of that UV and IR light can induce some great flowering, can increase a lot of that compound production and, and result in some healthier, really nice plants and great final product, man. I've read some studies that incorporating some of this UV IR lighting can increase leaf area, improve nutritional quality, and stimulate biomass production. Those are some great benefits, guys. And like I said, you can match these with any lights you got set up already. Personally, I've set them up with my FC6500 and my FC8000. Those lights bang. They are amazing. Definitely check 
check out Mars Hydro stuff, guys. They got some banging lights. And if you're a beginner just getting into the game, they got a full grow kit as well. You can get everything you need to get started from seed all the way to harvest. I'm talking pots, timers, lights, carbon filters, exhaust systems, fans, everything, guys. The works. Perfect. And then when you're done, just head on over to the ICANN VIP Bean Club where we got fire genetics for you guys. All sorts. Whether it's autos, photos, regs, no matter what you guys want, we got it. Definitely check out Mars Hydro. They got some great lights. And hit that discount code ICANNTHC. They always got sales running, guys. And you can use the discount code ICANNTHC on top of sale items and literally get a double discount. Sometimes it's even the triple discount, man. So definitely join up. Don't miss out and snag yourself a nice little UVIR setup to increase your flowering and take your terps to the next level, fam. Now, supplemental lighting is nothing new. A lot of people have been using it for a long time now. And what it does is mimic natural sunlight conditions. And a lot of people do that indoors because for the outdoors, for the most part, you literally naturally receive UV light from the sun. So if you're outdoors, it's less of a concern. But the intensity and the duration can vary depending on the geographical location and your local climate. Now, all that said, introducing some UV and IR lighting into your existing setup can provide a lot of benefits to your ladies. There are a lot of studies out there, guys. Go and check them out. But you gotta exercise caution. You want controlled exposure. It's important to provide controlled exposure to that UV light. Too much light can harm everything, including yourself. But the right amount can enhance certain characteristics. So that's a good thing. That's a win-win. And like I mentioned earlier, depending on what type of genetics you're running, that UV light can vary. The effects can vary. What you notice happening can vary. So if you want, you can try running something without UV light and something with UV light and see if you notice any differences. If you do, drop it in the comments and let me know. And I can hear some people asking, what if I only do UV light alone, nothing else? Well, truth be told, guys, you want to have a balanced spectrum. Providing a balanced spectrum of light including UV along with other essential factors like other waves, proper nutrients, environmental conditions, all those things are crucial for overall health and productivity of your ladies. So all that said, while UV light has the potential to introduce terpene production and overall potency in your flowers, you definitely should use it carefully and in controlled conditions to avoid any negative effects. I don't want anyone to say, yo, Matt caused me to get friggin' skin cancer, bro. Cause I'm gonna be like, bro, I never told you to do that, bro. I told you to be controlled. Be controlled, guys. Now drop it in the comments down below and let me know if you guys use any UV or IR lighting. I'm always interested to find out what you guys got to say. And wait, don't forget, if you guys want to find out more about growing that fire, then definitely check out any episode on screen right now. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam.